So let we begin our first lecture. In this lecture, we will solve exercise 1.1. It's first 10 questions. In this exercise, you will have a recall of what you have learned in the school calculus. The first question of this exercise is, you have to integrate all of the following. The first question is, you have to integrate zero. Since we have to integrate, let we integrate it with respect to x and let we name it as i. Since the integrals are antiderivatives and we have to find here the integral of zero. So we will have to check out that what is the function whose derivative is zero. And all of us know that from the school physics that every constant function has its derivative zero. Therefore, the answer of this integral is a constant k, where you have to mention that k is a constant. So this is the answer of this question. Let me move immediately to question number two. Here in this question, you have to integrate square root x. And again, we will integrate it with respect to x. And we will name its integral as i. <coughs> Here, you have to make use of the power rule of integrals, which states that if you are going to integrate x raised to the power n, and you are going to integrate it with respect to x, then the answer is simply x raised to the power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 and you have to add the constant of integration and whenever you are performing the integration you have to uh, add the constant of integration so according to this principle the integral is x raised to the power 1 divided by 2 plus 1 divided by 1 divided by 2 plus 1 plus a constant of integration c. So i is equal to x raised to the power 3 divided by 2 divided by 3 divided by 2 which can be further written as 2 x raised to the power 3 divided by 2 divided by 3 plus a constant of integration and this is the answer of your question. Next, we will move to the next question, number three. Question number three is, you have to integrate one plus x divided by x. So the denominator can be separated from the numerator terms. That is, you can write it one divided by x plus x divided by x. And you have to apply the distributive law. And you can separate the integrals. Plus x divided by x is equal to 1. And we know that the derivative of natural log of x is 1 by x. Therefore, we will write it natural log of x plus a constant of integration that is c1 similarly we know that the derivative of x with respect to x is 1 so we will write here x plus c2 where c1 and c2 are uh, constants of integration and when they are added they rise to a new constant of integration and we will mark it as constant c and we are left with natural log of x plus x plus a constant of integration c where you have to mention that c is equal to c1 plus c2 this is the answer 
uh, here uh, one question you can ask is that why do we use the absolute mark after after the natural log especially when we are going to make use of variable after the natural log it is because the natural log cannot accept the negative values for example negative one its natural log does not exist and it's infinity therefore whenever you are writing the natural log with a variable then you have to make use of absolute value so if you are applying natural log of minus one this is obviously this is equal to zero but if uh, you're applying a natural log without using the absolute sign then it would give you infinity so it is necessary that when you're applying the natural log on variables then you have to make use of absolute value the straightforward reason is that the natural log only accepts the positive values so next we will have to move on to the next question which a little bit trickier in this question you have to integrate x square minus 1 divided by x square plus 1 again you have to integrate it with respect to x you can make the numerator term very like to the denominator term that is you can make it like x square plus 1 since you have added it you have to subtract it for counterbalance and there is also a negative 1 at the last that has to be written x square plus 1 dx and you have x square plus 1 minus 2 and now the denominator can be separated over the numerator terms divided by x square plus 1 and here you can also apply the distributive law and this is equal to 1 dx minus 2 integral of 1 divided by 1 plus x square and this is equivalent to x minus 2 and we know from the school uh, calculus that the derivative of tan inverse x is 1 divided by 1 plus x square therefore we will write here tan inverse x plus the constant of integration this is the answer so next we will have to move to uh, the question number five in the question number five you have to integrate tan square x and from basic trigonometry this is equal to secant square x minus 1 separate its integrals secant square x dx minus integral of 1 dx this is equal to tan x and the integral of 1 is x plus a constant of integration next we will have to move to the uh, next question number six in the question number six you have to integrate cot square x dx this is very simple question and you will have to solve it by yourself uh, by making a use of the identity that cot square x is equal to cosecant square x minus 1 so you will have to make uh, this uh, make the use of this identity and you will have to solve it by yourself this is a very straightforward question so let me move to the next question number seven this is important question number six is your assignment question number seven is you have to integrate 
cos square x dx whenever there are sine square x and cos square x in some integral then you have to make the use of double angle identities so by making use of one of the famous identity cos square x is equal to 1 plus cos 2x divided by 2 and you have to apply the distributive law and you have to separate the integrals and you might get 1 divided by 2 dx plus 1 divided by 2 integral of cos 2x this is equal to 1 divided by 2x plus 1 divided by 2 cos 2x is the derivative of sine 2x divided by 2 plus a constant of integration and this is simply equal to x divided by 2 plus sine 2x divided by 4 plus a constant of integration <clears throat> question number 8 is very similar you will have to perform it by yourself in this question you have to solve the integral of sine square x dx and this would be equivalent to you have to make the use of double angle identity 1 minus cos 2x divided by 2 which means that its answer is simply x divided by 2 plus uh, there should not be plus there should be a minus minus sine 2x divided by 4 plus a constant of integration let me move to the next question number 9 question number 9 is you have to integrate i equal to square root 1 minus cos x You have to integrate it with respect to x. Here you can make the use of high half angle identities, and by using that identity, cos x is equal to cos x is equal to cos x is equal to cos x divided by 2 plus x divided by 2, and you have to apply the fundamental law of trigonometry, and you will get that cos 2x is equal to 1 minus 2 sine square x divided by 2 and by solving this you might get just a square root 2 because 1 and 1 gets cancelled and you have to separate the square root over 2 and sine square x by 2 and you, you might get sin x divided by 2 dx. So you are left with square root 2 and the integral of sin x by 2. The integral of sin is minus cos x by 2 and you have to divide it by the derivative of x by 2 that is 1 by 2 plus a constant of integration and you are left with minus 2 square root 2 cos x divided by 2 plus a constant of integration